I just wanted to check to see it. Oh my God. What? What are you doing? Is that a mask? Are you wearing a mask right now? Yeah, I am wearing a mask. I think it's cool. I wanted to do the whole mask thing. So I decided I was going to wear one. Lame. Listen, what is it that you want? Are you just here to ruin my day? Or are you here to actually like do something to give me some news? Well, I did come here to give you the new assignment, but I guess if you just want to play Grim Reaper instead, you could do that. Oh. Yep, boss wanted you to take this. Make sure to look for the one dressed up as a Jungle Cruise skipper, okay? Jungle Cruise, don't mess this up again. So this is it, huh? The totem. Feels weird holding it. I thought there'd be a little bit more to it. There is more to it, but you're already here, so it doesn't matter. Well, I guess I'll uh, see you back here sometime. <laughs> All right, I'm out though, seriously. The mask is cool, by the way. No. No, it isn't. All right, enough messing around. It is time for a Halloween special the likes of which you have never seen before because I thought I had talked about everything related to the Haunted Mansion in the past. I've had this channel for upwards of, what, seven years now? At this point, we've all been around the block with the Haunted Mansion, but there's some parts of it that still sort of elude my grasp. Parts that I've never looked at in depth. And I know that you find that hard to believe because my first, first thing I do whenever I get to a Disney park is make a beeline for either New Orleans Square or Liberty Square to go and experience experience the Haunted Mansion. And in honor of the spookiest time of the year, I've stolen someone's very spooky looking Halloween coat to talk to you all about the hidden, the buried, and the secret legends behind the Haunted Mansion. These stories that we may have forgotten over the years but still exist in one form or another. In this case, concept art. And to start this video, I feel like we should go back to where the Haunted Mansion began. Not at Disneyland in Anaheim, but actually as an idea for a little park in Burbank called Mickey Mouse Park. Oh, here it is. Within this chest are the secret, hidden, buried stories of the Haunted Mansion. What do you say we crack it open in honor of spooky season? There's nothing, it's empty. Where are the stories? Going back way, way, way before even Disneyland, the original idea for a place for parents and children to have fun together in the world of Disney began as a sort of expansion to the studios in Burbank on Buena Vista Street called Mickey Mouse Park. And yes, the railroad was a carryover concept from this original idea. And as part of the development for Mickey Mouse Park, there was going to be a small area at the end of a crooked old street featuring a rickety old church and a road leading up to a decrepit old mansion that you may recognize from a later incarnation of the Haunted Mansion. Now we all know that that old chateau would eventually become the Haunted Mansion, but my question here, the question I'm going to raise right now, is what was the church supposed to be? Was it going to be maybe an exhibit on how people lived back then? Was it going to be a restaurant? Maybe an attraction? Like how we had like the NBA experience for a while at Disney Springs, was this going to be like the Catholic experience where you could pay extra, pay for like a day pass and you get like the whole, the whole shebang? But then past the church, there would also be a graveyard before you reach the mansion itself. The cemetery would be called Shady Rest and would not, as as I can judge by this piece of art be part of the Haunted Mansion queue. This would be separate. You see the entrance for Shady Rest is right there and the entrance for the mansion is over there. And part of me wonders if this whole Shady Rest Cemetery attached to the Haunted Mansion attraction idea didn't really die. Not in Anaheim, not in Orlando, not in Tokyo, but instead over in Paris with Phantom Manor and Boot Hill. You see, Boot Hill is sort of a mini attraction located adjacent to Phantom Manor where some of the residents of Thunder Mesa, including the Ravenswood family, are buried. Henry Ravenswood himself, also known as, yeah, the Phantom, spoiler alert, in case you, you didn't know, they're the, they're the same guy, is buried there. And you know, fine, haunted house attraction with a cemetery attached, fine, sounds good. But look at Phantom Manor and now look at the concept art for Mickey Mouse Park. I think they were looking back on this piece of art specifically when they were designing this new haunted mansion. Which brings me to the next point I'm going to, I'm gonna set this, this is too much. It's, too, it's loud, it's clanking everywhere. I'm setting that down, it's, I'll deal with it later. Brings me to my next point. I think the Imagineers designing Phantom Manor really had a, a love for the history 
of Disneyland and the history of Mickey Mouse Park and the company as a whole. Tony Baxter, my good friend, helped with this. So that's why this sort of echoes that artwork. And there's actually another piece of artwork of where we would originally encounter the bride in one of these sort of proto walkthrough early ideas for the Haunted Mansion in Anaheim this piece of art right here. You can see that there is a bride, which we did get in the attic scene later on, but this doesn't look like the attic. This looks like some sort of grand staircase. Back to Phantom Manor now. It's this way. See you in the old PM, that's what I'm calling Phantom Manor now because we're friends, opened up at Disneyland Paris. It had this grand staircase behind the boarding area. You see at Disneyland, it was just that sort of black empty void. At Disney World, you were in sort of a portrait gallery that wasn't changing. Paris, you were in front of a grand staircase and it was really cool. You could sort of see the storm raging outside through these giant windows. The wind was blowing in. It was actually, it was really cool and it helped sort of set the mood for what the rest of the attraction would be like. But when PM underwent a in 2019, a brand new figure was added to that grand staircase, Melanie Ravenswood herself, the bride. And you look me in the eyes right now and tell me that this scene isn't lifted almost entirely, completely, directly from this bit of Haunted Mansion concept art. It absolutely 100% is. And now I'm going on and on and on talking about Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris when that's not even what this video is about. This is about the Haunted Mansion. I just think it's really interesting to draw these parallels between these unused sort of scenes from the original Haunted Mansion planned for Anaheim that never ended up making it into any Haunted Mansion but did end up making somewhat of an appearance in Paris. It's very, very interesting to me. Throughout my journeys across the interwebs and into the pages of these books that I'm looking at right now on my shelf, I found one inscription about the Haunted Mansion that really sort of solidified its place in my mind as one of the best attractions because not only do you ride through amazingly crafted show scenes and special effects, but you also get to experience a very small portion of a walkthrough attraction. And at one point, the Haunted Mansion was going to be a full walkthrough attraction. And the piece of concept art I'm talking about right now actually is... Remember when I said I was dropping the chest? Yeah, I think it's gotta be in here, right? It, ha it has to be in here. This piece of art, won't you look at that? It wasn't empty after all. This, this piece of art though. That's what we're talking about. Now the thing that immediately catches my eye in this sketch is the butler pointing to the portrait over the fireplace. And we'll talk about that portrait in a second, but this is sort of a prelude to the original beginnings of the Haunted Mansion, back when it was going to be a walkthrough. If you're familiar with the Haunted Mansion's sister attraction, Pirates of the Caribbean, you know that it began as a pirate's wax museum, sort of a museum you'd walk through with different displays of wax figures of pirates going about their debauchery and burning and pillaging and drinking and also maybe sometimes a little bit of swashbuckling. I'm not 100% sure if they ever confirmed the swashbuckling, but I'm, I'm sure it was implied. Eventually, after the success of It's a Small World at the 1964 World's Fair in New York, Webb decided that it would be better for immersion into the story and also for capacity to change pirates into a boat-style attraction, and that's what we have today. And let me say, they were right. Mansion, along the same lines as pirates, changed its ride system multiple times during development. It sort of started as a show showcase of illusions and special effects set to some creepy tunes and some creepy ambiance before turning into the walkthrough attraction that we see in this piece of concept art. Now this piece is called Portrait Gallery Haunted Mansion Parentheses Entrance and may I say just absolutely beautiful title really rolls off the tongue. I, I get what they're for, okay? It's not, it's not an artistic title, it's just, it's, it's meant for business. It's meant to show the viewer what this is. So we have here a sort of precursor to the portrait gallery that we have at Disneyland nowadays. You can see the, the same right-hand turn that you take at the end of the hallway and the big statue leering at you from the end. Although here, instead of just turning right to get onto your doom buggies, it is blocked by two suits of armor and some sort of metal-ish fence, barrier, gate, I can't tell what it is. And while the busts are missing from the end of the hallway, we do have this sort of Via Napoli pizza oven looking guy staring at us. But never to fear, we do get the turning busts, or at least the turning bust, on the left-hand side of the hallway where the windows would be now. And of course, who could forget everybody's favorite, Batman, but not the one you're thinking of. No, this one was going to be different. This was going to be a changing portrait. You know that sort of subgenre of attraction where a cast member will guide you through the attraction? It really sort of started with the Jungle Cruise where the cast member, the skipper, would take you through the jungles of the world, eventually moving on to, you know, the great movie ride and even Listen to the Land at Epcot was originally guided by a cast member. I think that the original idea for the Haunted Mansion was very similar to this where a cast member, as a butler or a maid, similar to how they are today, would guide you through 
through these different show scenes as you made your way, as you walked through the house. Mansion. So in this scene, we have the butler, the dilapidated mansion, and of course the portrait of what we can assume to be the home's owners above the fireplace. Something interesting that stands out to me though that I didn't really notice the first time looking at this concept art is this bookshelf seems to have swung out, almost like it's some sort of hidden door. Now the owners of the house in this very early incarnation of the Haunted Mansion story were Captain Gore and his wife, Priscilla. Captain Gore being an old pirate captain- No, get out of here, not, not yet. Okay, we're not there yet. Captain Gore being an old pirate captain who purchased the mansion in New Orleans, and his wife, sometimes named Priscilla, sometimes not, some, sometimes she's just the bride, who is unaware of her husband's devious and, yes, it is implied, swashbuckling past. After finding out about said swashbuckling, Captain Gore kills his wife and her ghost haunts him to eternity, or at least until he takes his own life, that's for later, because he was so annoyed or scared or both of his dead wife. And if you can sort of see the overarching pirate theme for New Orleans Square sort of rearing its head here, you're onto something, you're, you're getting closer. And there are other pitches out there of different effects that you would notice on your way through the house, like these hands reaching through the walls and ceilings at guests, interesting. And another yet slightly different take on that parlor, this one I believe ties back to the Blood family, which is a whole separate story that I've talked about before. The whole family lived in the house, their last name was Blood. Very ironically, they were all murdered violently and then Disney decided to fix up the mansion one day and move it to Disneyland and then it was haunted and then they turned it into a whole, you know, ride attraction thing. Now every Haunted Mansion fan worth their salt knows that there's plenty of references to Captain Gore littered throughout the Disneyland and Disney World mansions. From tombstones outside the Walt Disney World mansion to a ship weather vane atop the Disneyland mansion, it's alluded that the owner of this house may or may not have had some swashbuckling in his past, or her past. Which brings me to this piece of concept art, which you can obviously tell is sort of a precursor to the finale of the stretching room scene that we get today in the Haunted Mansion. And I think it's really cool the set dressing here is so much more than what we ended up with. We only really got the rafters and the hanging skeleton and the lightning. I mean, the lightning's cool, but this art adds in the chair and the furniture in the room. I think it's really interesting. I don't know how they would have accomplished this, maybe with some sort of glass floor that could be obscured with a scrim above it. I don't know. I'm sure there was a way it was possible though. There, there, there had to be. Which then brings us back to the whole ghost host argument. Who is the ghost host? And you may be saying to yourself, well, obviously the ghost host is Captain Gore because he's Captain Gore in this concept art. And in the stretching room, he tells us he'd show us his way out of the stretching room. And then, you know, the, the lightning flashes and we see him and he falls and it's a whole thing. But no, this is, this is a different story. This is a different take on the Haunted Mansion from before the ride was even open. I'm, of course, in the camp that the ghost host is this guy. That's what he looks like, that's what he looks like, and uh, he, he's nobody special. He's not Master Gracie, he's just the ghost host. Don't worry about it, don't worry about his name, it's not important. That's the ghost host. That's what I think though, and that's the beauty of the Haunted Mansion. The story is fluid. You, you can think whatever you want to think. If you like to believe that the ghost host is Master Gracie, or that Master Gracie owns the Haunted Mansion, go ahead, that's totally fine. I mean, you're wrong, but it's it's totally okay. I, I don't even know why I showed that portrait. That portrait might not even be Master Gracie, it's just the young man, I think. What's his name? What do they call it? The aging man, but you would be forgiven if you said Master Gracie. I, I forgive you, I, I think that's fair. However, my friends, the legends of the Haunted Mansion continue because there do appear sometimes in concept art, early prototypes, sort of proto characters that we've come to know and love from the mansion. Like this one, who should be in here. Nope, empty again. No, I guess I'll just have to use the power of my editing to show you. Right here, this is Madame Z, an early sort of prototype for Madame Leota. You can see her design has changed very much since we last saw her. Very different. Now while, yes, Madame Z also conjures up musical instruments for the spirits to play like Madame Leota does today, we also have animals like this owl, this crocodile, slash alligator, slash cat with wings, and then this thing, and then uh, this. And that, I think this is a, a, a mask of some sort. You know what? I know, I'm gonna figure this out. What are these things? Now these are one of the only apparitions that Madame Z summoned that sort of look a little bit humanoid. I mean, they have human faces and they're sort of just wisps traveling across the, the air, the, the, the area above her table. And the whole idea of seances and a lot of the inspiration for the Haunted Mansion actually came from the spiritualism movement back around the turn of the century. We've talked about it before, where the whole idea of contacting the afterlife and memento mori and contacting family members after they had passed was a really in vogue sort of fun thing to do 
with your friends at the time. That's the whole Ouija board. That's where Ouija boards came from. It got their popularity, at least. And some of you might be saying, wow, they were they were contacting spirits back then? That's amazing. Why don't we do that anymore? They, they weren't. They weren't really contacting spirits. It was where the term parlor tricks came from. Because you and your friends would gather in your parlor to hold a seance and then one of your friends or multiple friends, depending on who was in on it, crafted some, albeit sometimes convincing auditory or visual illusions to make people think that they were hearing or seeing the dead, especially spirit photography, which is very, very easy to fake. But no, I'm not here to trash on spiritualism, okay? It actually gave us a lot of scenes and a lot of set pieces that the Haunted Mansion features, like the seance room with Madame Leota, obviously. But hey, you know, it wasn't all bad. It actually gave women a voice in society because the men who are sitting in on these seances were like, oh, well, my dead ancestor is telling me to do this. I should do this. And who doesn't want to just crack open a few Baja blasts and summon some spirits with your friends on a Saturday night? That sounds like a great time. But circling back around to spirit photography, sometimes old family members or ghosts were photographed in group photos of you and your friends having your little ceremony that featured weird sort of ectoplasmic distortions and sometimes disembodied heads would be floating around above you, which I believe that is what this is a reference to. I also think it's worth noting that there are some black cats underneath the table and Madame Z also has a crystal ball with, yes, a disembodied head inside. Remember that for later for when Madame Leota is invented and, and, and actually put into the mansion. But Madame Z, just like the rest of the mansion around her, would continue to grow and evolve. Now, I'm not sure which of these pieces of concept art came first in the development, but here is another variation of Madame Z that we get. Keeping the instruments in the air, but no longer having any weird winged animals or whatever that ended up being. This one features less animals flying around the seance table. There is a ghost, wisp, and the, the instruments, which obviously did end up staying. I'm a little bit sad though because the black cat does remain in this piece of art, but when the haunted mansion opens, obviously we all know that the raven instead is sitting in on the seance. No black cat to be seen, and that's a darn shame. I would love to see more cats in the haunted mansion. Oh, there's one. But the thing that really interests me about this one specifically is that Madame Z isn't a ghost, or at least she's not obviously a ghost. You can look at her right here. She doesn't have any sort of ethereal glow or translucence that a lot of the other ghosts in pieces of concept art that are related to this do have. She seems to just be a regular living human mortal. What is she doing in the Haunted Mansion at this point? What was the story supposed to be? Madame Z isn't dead. Someone get her out of there. Someone tell her that she might not be safe. Haven't you heard? The mansion now has its very own unhappy haunt. Someone help her. Madame Z would also go on to evolve into a different Disney Parks character, Madame Zarkov, who has ties to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, and no matter how much I talk about anything, the video topic always somehow ties back to the Haunted Mansion, SCA, or a People Mover. I hadn't mentioned a People Mover in this video yet, so I, I figured I'd get that out of the way, but yes, this does have SCA ties. She was allegedly the head of the Museum of the Weird as well as a member of SCA, so Museum of the Weird appears in the SCA storyline as well. I Gotta make another whole web about that, I guess. That is, however, only if you consider the now closed and defunct Adventurers Club canon to the story of SEA. Some do, some don't. And then, of course, you got this guy. What what's going on? What's what's the what's the deal here, Mark? Obviously, the gag here is that this hunter who died and went to the haunted mansion is being tormented by this tiger that he killed during his life, who he turned into a rug and is now trying to, I guess, eat him. It's like a Jungle Cruise X Haunted Mansion crossover. You can see yet another take on this hunter pinned to a board behind Walt Disney in the Disneyland 10 Centennial program while they're showing off different sets and concepts for the Haunted Mansion. Here is a better, sort of less obscured view of the piece, and you can see that instead of being an entire ride scene where he's being attacked by the tiger, instead this is a changing portrait where he's being boiled alive. Intri very cool. Mark, very dark. Back to the show scene though for a second, there's even a concept for what this effect would look like. The, the rug coming to life and then grabbing the hunter's butt. I, I guess it's his pants. It's grabbing his pants to be fair to this tiger. Now there is one last piece of art that I want to show you all before I decide to wrap this video up and it is actually, I, I, it should be, if my estimations are correct, it should be in here. This should have it in there. And, oh, there you go, it's full again. Wow, this this chest makes absolutely no sense. I've decided to stop questioning it. This piece of Haunted Mansion concept art, I think just goes incredibly, insanely, uncharacteristically for Disney 
hard. It's just, it's, it's so cool. I'm not 100% on what scene this concept art is meant to represent. Maybe it's the beginning of the graveyard scene, you know, where all the spirits are rising out of their graves, you know, projected on the scrim. Maybe it's part of the seance circle. Either way, this looks like an album cover. That piece I just showed you was from Ken Anderson, but this piece by Exitensio shows that Disney originally wasn't going to shy away from the, well, creepier, more decayed sort of idea for the demon clock before they went with the more Roly Crump-esque, less horrifying, less decayed version. Or come on, this piece by Claude Coates showing you how you would find your way from the mansion into the boundless realm of the supernatural, the darker, more spooky, scarier side of the haunted mansion really stands out in this art, especially in Claude's art because he's the scary guy. Mark Davis was the funny guy. Now, if this video at all appealed to you or you want to learn more about some obscure pieces of Haunted Mansion history and concept art, I highly, highly recommend my friends checking out Haunted Mansion, Imagineering a Disney Classic by Jason Sorrell. It might be disappearing in the green screen right now, but trust me, this book is chock full. You can see it right there on the back of pieces of art that are very hard to find, very hard to come by, and that just tell a lot of just new stories for the Haunted Mansion and its creation, its development, even like its story beats after it had opened. Highly, highly recommend it. It's not sponsored or anything, by the way. It's just a great book. But there you have it, everyone. We dove deep into some legends of the Haunted Mansion. I hope you enjoyed looking at these pieces of art as much as I enjoyed talking about them. And I... Oh. Greetings, I come bearing a gift for the one dressed as the Jungle Cruise Skipper. Prime? Yeah, yes, Dallin Prime, the Jungle Cruise Skipper one. Was that a mask? You're wearing a mask? Yeah, it looks cool. It makes me look threatening. Mmm... All right, no one wants the mask. No one, no one's liking the mask. I'm ditching the mask. Okay, the mask obviously isn't working. Okay, are we happy? All right, well you can just set that down. I'm in the middle of filming a video right now. You just leave it here. I'll get to it later. All right, I'm gonna set it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just gonna set it on this uh, this treasure chest right here. Make sure he holds it for like three to five seconds. Okay. All right. All right, I'm out. Uh, peace. I don't. How am I gonna get out of here? All right. Goodbye. See you later. some weird new variant popping up. Oh, Grady, set it on the treasure chest. I'm not taking any risks. Been delivered some weird stuff in my life, but never a strange black rock from a variant of myself. All right, and it is a rock. All right, so now I got a weird black rock from a variant of myself. No idea what to do with this. Probably just throw it on the counter somewhere, watch it sit and collect dust, because that's what these things do. Yeah, it'd go real nice right there next to the Sonic and the lightsaber. Ah, gorgeous. Well, now that that's over. The end card has arrived. Everyone, thank you all so much for watching this video. Sort of a Halloween special dissecting some art from the Haunted Mansion that I haven't really covered before. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you're new around here, if you want more Haunted Mansion content, also hit the subscribe button. The names that you currently see scrolling on the side of your screen belong to those of my Patreon patrons. Over at patreon.com slash offhanddisney, they give even just $1 a month to get access to most of the perks. Like, uh, you get early access, they got early access to this video. Sometimes they get exclusive Patreon videos that I am currently actually working on. They'll only be excluded, or er, excluded. They will only be featured on Patreon. They won't be excluded there, believe me. If that sounds interesting to you, again, that's patreon.com slash offhanddisney. They're the ones who help keep this channel going, help it make it so I don't have to do an advertisement every single video, so I, I really do appreciate them. I also have social media, by the way, that's not just YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I am at Offhand Disney on all of those places. If you want to follow me, get some more Offhand Disney content in the meantime, and also, also, prepare yourself for the new For Your Amusement episode featuring me with my friends Ryan and Byron. Please be sure to check that. I believe it's going live on Halloween, so a couple days from now, if that's interesting to you, I... Highly recommend checking it out for more Haunted Mansion goodness. And if you've looked at my merch shop recently, you may have noticed a few new items popping up. Just keep your eye on that space. I'll have a whole other thing on that, a little longer segment on that coming up in the future. Just keep, keep an eye out. Everybody, thank you all so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Goodbye.